Bob, uh, people like Bob Bowman's horn for being right about politics, and I'm always, you know, tooting Max Kaiser's or or uh, Gerald Salente. Or, but the truth is, I mean, I've been talking about this stuff 16 years and having economists on like George Humphrey, I heard him 12 years ago, break down exactly what would happen with derivatives. And we just heard Max Kaiser breaking down. I'm like Noah telling folks about the New World Order coming. And uh, now it's here. And it is a private bank to rule the world run by the Ponzi scheme operators. I mean, you know, at the end of the day, the super Ponzi scheme operators don't go to jail. They become world emperors, world financial oligarch rulers. So pretty incredible stuff. And we've been telling people buy gold and silver because they're devaluing every major currency except for the Swiss franc, which is shooting up like a rocket right now. And so it's time to get into gold and silver. Now, again, uh, you were telling me off air earlier, most of the gold and silver you've got is stuff you got three weeks ago. You buy ahead in the market. You've got it on hand. Uh, three weeks ago, gold was, I don't know, 100 bucks less than it is now. Silver, two or three bucks less than it is now. You're still able to pass those savings on. It's like people getting in a time machine and going back in time. Uh, and J.P. Morgan, the top of the pyramid, they say it's going to be 2500 by the end of the year. I don't know if that's the case. I hope not. Because that signifies they're accelerating the demise of the dollar even quicker. And the general yuppies out there that only care about Sports Center and the red zone and the rest of it, they have really got some heartache coming. We tried to stop it, but at least our listeners are somewhat more prepared. I just hope people will call and get the great deals on gold and silver. And the 2 to 5% uh, that you end, um, end up making on these deals uh, also supports the radio network. And again, that's 2 to 5% before the stuff went up. So uh, he couldn't sell it to you if he bought it today at these prices. So briefly, Ted, list some of the other gold and silver offers you've got that are radio specials. Yeah, radio specials right now. The franc I haven't raised in price yet. It's at 396.85. The British sovereign, half ounce or quarter ounce gold coin, 497. Uh, Walking Liberty Habs right now, 1953, is a great buy. Even the older 20s. Alex, I recommended them at 1900, then 2000. Now they're sitting at 2282. They don't make those anymore. There's a finite supply. You know, the demand is pushing those now. Uh, and collectors are non-confiscatable, uh, correct? Right, exactly. And that and this stuff is the stuff that's next to melt. You don't so, want to be So you're basically a getting a great collector coin at, at, at near a bullion price. Right. U.S. Eagles obviously are a good buy too right now. They're at 1951.94. Uh, bags of silver, the dimes, I call them survival bags of dimes. I used to sell them in 1,000, you know, $1,000 face increments, but now we've dropped it down to 1,000 dimes, which is $100 face. And currently right now it's $3,035. Those are real silver dimes showing the devaluation there. Uh, Ted, you've also, I know, always have a smattering of other things like Krugerrands, Maple Leafs, my favorite. I think it's the prettiest coin out there that's being minted. Uh, the Buffaloes, you got any of those? Yeah, we actually do have those available, and people should be buying them Wait, right hold, now. Hold, hold your horses in. I, I, I want one of those, so just hold me one, okay? Yeah, we'll get one. Okay, okay thank you, Ted. I, I buy a coin or two here every you know, few months if I can. 800-686-2237. 800-686-2237. Ladies and gentlemen, now is the time to get involved. I tried to tell you 250 bucks and 300 bucks and 500 and 1,000, and people said, oh, it's a bubble then. The bubble is the global government destroying the currencies and destroying our future. And this is not going to save us getting gold and silver, but it is a good lifeboat, in my educated opinion. And this is what I believe in, and I think we've been borne out to be correct. The minute I think it's a bubble, I'll tell you, get out of it. Uh, the way they keep devaluing, gold could go to 100000 an ounce. I mean, if they go the Zimbabwe in or Weimar route, I don't think that's going to happen. But uh, it's not that gold's a bubble. It's that they're killing the global currencies. 800-686-2237. 1-800-686-2237. Ted, thank you so much for those reports. Yeah, you bet, Alex. All right. Uh, now, going to Bob Bowman, he is the former director of the Advanced Space Program Development for the U.S. Air Force in the Ford and Carter administrations when it was secret, and a former United States Air Force Lieutenant Colonel with 101 combat missions. He holds a Ph.D. in aeronautics and nuclear engineering from the California Institute of Technology. Despite his involvement with space programs and defense, he emerged as a early public critic of the Strategic Defense Initiative when they weaponized it. SDI, a.k.a. Star Wars, during the Ronald Reagan administration. In 2000, he campaigned nationwide for the nomination of Reform Party of the United States of America for President of the United States. The Patriots, 
dot us is his excellent website and i want to cover uh, several issues with him uh, but first off sir when i saw this last week darpa loses contact with hypersonic aircraft they claim they lost contact with the last one that goes thirteen thousand miles an hour we're told as if that's the real speed uh pentagon agency tests hypersonic craft uh they call it the global strike and from other folks i've talked to who've worked in the air force uh, one of them was then hired out of the Air Force to work on the front line of the Apollo program, Raymond Teague. He told me a lot of stuff privately and then wouldn't say it once he got on air. Uh, but he did say some of it. He thought he was he was having heart trouble and thought he was about to die. He's still alive, thank God, and, and told me a lot of stuff. But I'm not even going to get into that. The point is, he said, yes, most of the space program's secret. What you see is not all that's out there. You, under, you know, uh, actually kind of got a little annoyed when I kept asking you for hours you know, in, uh, in the green room at the ballroom to tell me more. You said, okay, I'll tell you some stuff that's leaked out that they said uh, that's, that should be classified. But but you talked about uh, robotic drones, DU Sabos, decapitation weapons for heads of state. And now I'm seeing more and more of this. So my question is, uh, you know, they're telling us this is the latest, but from my in information, they're just showing us, you know, older stuff, kind of like the B-2 bomber was around for 20 years before they rolled that out. Uh, in the late 80s. And so what's your take on uh, the, quote, end of the shuttle program that we know Werner von Braun thought up in the 30s and uh, the fact that they admit that more than 80 percent of the space program is 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 under DARPA and the, and, uh, the Pentagon? Well, sure. Uh, when uh, when I was on active duty, I was the executive agent for all of DARPA's activities in space, which means I made the final uh, uh, decisions on uh, the contractors and the money and, and all that stuff and approved the, uh, the reports. And they were doing a lot of interesting things at that time, which, of course, were secret, like laser battle stations and whatnot. And uh, we uh, uh, also uh, developed components for uh, other black programs like those directly under the assistant secretary of the Air Force uh, uh, spy satellites and all the rest of that. So, yeah, there was a lot of stuff going on. And uh, I was deeply into uh, hypersonic aerodynamics. My uh, Ph.D. thesis at uh, Caltech uh, was uh, uh, studying uh, uh, shock waves and boundary layers and interactions and whatnot at uh, hypersonic speeds at extremely high altitudes. And uh, uh, so, I mean, this stuff has been under study for a long time. Uh, I did postdoctoral work at the von Karman Institute in Belgium in uh, uh, numerical methods for solving complex aerodynamic problems like hypersonic flight turbulence, which is even worse. Uh, but it's interesting to me that uh, they still don't know enough about the aerodynamics to be able to control these things. Uh, they're able to launch it, and uh, uh, nine seconds later, it goes unstable, and they lose it into the Pacific. And If we're to believe them, these could have weapons platforms on them, and they're claiming they keep failing, and they're putting them into orbit. And, and that's some of the things that you talked about, that even by the late 70s, there were these unmanned craft up there with the Sabos. Well, uh, I don't think they can hide something like that in, in orbit. And I, I got to say, it's much easier to put something like that into orbit than it is to fly it 13,000 miles an hour through the atmosphere and bring it down. Uh, the uh, Well, then let me go back before we get into this. Yeah. Uh, you talked about... Uh, debating the new head of Star Wars and others and that they would get mad and start blurting classified things out. And that's the only reason you can talk about it. But uh, yeah. can you, I mean, can you give us stuff that is, is supposed to be classified, but is now public domain? Uh, I mean, give us the give us as best you can without violating your national security agreements of, of the, the type of stuff they've got. Well, uh they they can put a lot of stuff into orbit. Uh, the, the thing is, there's so much space capability around the world now that they can't hide it. Uh, 
you know, we've got school teachers in England and whatnot that watch every launch of the United States. And well, no, uh, the Japanese have found big, big, what looks like platforms in space and things. I mean, there is a lot of unknown stuff up there. Well, there's stuff up there that uh, nobody knows exactly what it is, uh, but uh, uh, they do know uh, its orbit, its altitude, uh, and where it is over the Earth at just about any time. Well, just tell us about the DU weapons. Well, that's something that uh, uh, was under development. A long time ago, and when I was debating one of the colonels in the Star Wars program, uh, I was talking about uh, the fact that uh, uh, we had shown way back in the 70s that a few pounds of metal properly shaped fired at the Earth from space could impact like a meteorite, dig a crater, and at least in theory be capable of destroying hardened military targets like command bunkers and missile silos totally without warning. Now, this colonel, uh, in his rebuttal to me, said, Now, Bob, you know perfectly well that uh, uh, that program to uh, make uh, uh, titanium and depleted uranium cones and guide them with GPS, that program doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, anyway, he, he had... Uh, reveal technical details, which I had never done. Uh, the, the fact of the matter is that uh, um, it's possible to do a lot of this stuff. Uh, whether it's practical is another thing. Whether we have uh, any such things in space ready to deorbit against a pinpoint target somewhere on the Earth I really can't say at this point. I uh, I rather doubt it, uh, but that we could have because the technical capability, at least, is there. Uh, we well, I mean, don't you just put a a satellite with propulsion into space, launch it in one of the secret shuttle launches, or or in one of the other rocket launches? And then it's got a, uh, a a weapons array of the DU weapons. And uh, because I believe what you told me was you were saying it was being looked at in unmanned systems for uh, head of state decapitation. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, but remember, once those things are in orbit, to get them down out of orbit, you have to have propulsion to... Uh, deorbit them. So they have to have some kind of propulsion. It's not just a dumb piece of metal. Uh, and then you, uh, you have your sensors, you have your GPS guidance, but uh, you also need to have uh, some kind of uh, capability to steer it, either with uh, little thrusters or with uh, little aerodynamic devices at the tail end of the cone. Uh, and that's one of the things that's hard to do. And Oh, I uh, see. They're always trying to get steering, like with this new little space plane. Uh, yeah. And that's why they're doing it in the atmosphere and not in orbit where it's easier, because once the weapon comes into the atmosphere, that's when it starts going crazy. They can get the speed, they yep. just can't get the accuracy. Right, right. Now, Getting the accuracy is not impossible. Uh, either we studied uh, uh, terminally guided ICBMs, uh, and uh, if you can do that, uh, you can uh, do it with uh, these rods from God or whatever they call them now. Um, these kind of projects. You're talking about controlling an ICBM throughout the entire process uh, as it launches, goes into orbit, it comes back down, and goes through the MERV sequence. Now, now, Doctor, expanding so about uh, uh, accurately pinpoint guiding and controlling the individual warheads. Yes. Um, expanding on that because we're, we're about to go to break. 
uh, and I want to come back and talk about Fukushima. You Well, let's just get to Fukushima now. You were absolutely accurate in that, and now it turns out they knew there were all these meltdowns. They covered it up, yeah. and uh, now the EPA has just raised the level of radiation of what they say is safe. That is not very uh, uh, reassuring for future disasters that that they just always cover this stuff up. That's right. And uh, uh, still uh, in this country, we're.